Hi everybody, it's Frank here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a full system image, or clone, of your entire hard drive in Windows 8.1 or Windows 7. So why do you want to do this? Let's say you've got your computer all set up just the way you want it, with all your programs installed and configured, and everything is all skittles and rainbows. What would happen if your hard drive just decided that morning to die? Or on a more positive note, let's say you want to upgrade your system to a larger or faster hard drive, or maybe you just bought a new super fast solid state drive and you want to have your operating system and programs running from that. Of course you made backups of all your files, but in either case it's looking like a very long day reinstalling everything on the new hard drive and getting it all set up again, unless you made a system image back when everything was happy happy. Now all you have to do is restore your system image to the new drive and have everything just the way it was, but on a new drive. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's what we've got here. I've got a fresh install of Windows 8.1 Enterprise on this machine. I've got just a couple of programs installed on it. I've got my screen recorder software, and I installed Firefox on there. Other than that, this is a brand new fresh install of 8.1 that's been updated. And here's how I have the drive set up on this machine. I've got two physical hard drives in here. I've got this one terabyte drive for my C drive, and then I've got a separate physical hard drive, this three terabytes that I use for file storage. And what I want to do on this machine is I want to show you how to do a clone or a system image of this entire C drive. And I'm going to save that as a file on my files drive. And then I'm going to take that C drive and physically remove it from the system, put in a separate hard drive, and then do a restore on that and show you how that all works. And I'll also go into a few pitfalls that people will find along the way, error messages, and I'll show you how to correct that as well. Okay, so let me show you the physical hard drives I've got on here. I'm going to right click on the Windows icon and go to Disk Management. It's nice of them to put that handy feature right there. And here's what I've got physical hard drive wise. I've got my C drive here that's on a one terabyte physical disk. It's also got a system reserve partition that Windows puts in there by default. It's a recovery partition. I want to have both of these. I want to have my C and this recovery partition. Basically this entire disk zero, I want an image of that. I want to be able to take this disk out of the machine, do something else with it, and have that image restored onto this new physical disk that I've got in here. It's just plugged in, it's not formatted or anything. But I want to put that system image on here, restore it to there, and then have this computer just running along all nice and happy. And one thing I want you to note here is that I've got a one terabyte drive for disk zero and a 500 gig drive for disk one. So disk one is only half the size of disk zero. And if I try to do a restore of a system image onto that, it's going to fail because you're trying to pack a terabyte of data into a half a terabyte can and it's not going to fit. But the reason I did this is specifically to show you how to correct this, how to make your system image so that it will restore onto a smaller drive to simulate what you might want to do if you're going to go from a mechanical drive to a new solid state drive for your operating system and programs and the new solid state drive is smaller than your physical disk that you have now. One thing to keep in mind, if you're restoring a system image from a mechanical drive and you're going to put it onto a solid state drive, you may need to do a disk alignment on the solid state drive. And what this will allow is the solid state drive to be aligned correctly and to get the maximum speed. And this is something you don't need to do if you're going from a mechanical drive to another mechanical drive. And I don't believe you need to do this if you're going from a solid state drive and restoring back to the same solid state drive as if you were doing a system recovery. To find out in your particular case with your particular hard drive, do a Google search on that for restoring a system image to a solid state drive and look for alignment. It's a simple procedure that you might have to do, maybe not have to do, but check that out. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to shrink the size of this C drive so that you can create a system image that's smaller in order to install that system image on a smaller capacity solid state drive. And it's real easy to do in Windows. Now, because I know that there's 911 gig of free space on this drive, the whole operating system has only taken 20 or 30 gigs. I know I can do this with no problem at all. And it's real easy to do. Just right click on here. 
click on shrink volume. Now by default, it's going to show you the maximum amount that it can shrink this drive down to. And it can actually shrink this down to about 25 gigs in size. Don't do that, because if you do that, you'll have zero space left over to do any more file writing, and you may run into problems creating your image. But I want to make sure that the image I'm going to end up with is going to be small enough to fit on my new destination drive. So what I'm going to do is change this number here so I end up with a, a size that's going to fit easily on the new drive. Don't make it exactly the same size as your new drive. Make it a little smaller. Just in case there's an extra bit or something plus or minus here and there, it'll fail because of that. And it's no big deal to make it smaller. I'll show you how to expand that out later when we get it done. So in this case, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to take, say, 800 gigs off of this drive. And it's going to leave me with 153 gig drive when it's done. And it's real easy to do. Just click on shrink and give it a second to spin there. And you'll see it shrunk that drive down. And now it's got this unallocated space. We don't care about that. That's not going to be part of the system image because it essentially doesn't exist anymore. And I'm going to have a drive that's going to easily fit on this new disk here. Now, one thing you might run into here is even though it says it can shrink the drive down that small, it'll actually error out when you try to do that, and it'll say it won't fit. And the reason it gives you this error is because there's fragmented files on the disk, and it can't just take the, the end part of the disk and chop that off because there's little bits of files on there. And it's real easy to fix. Just go into File Manager, right-click on your C drive, go to Properties, go to Tools, and then click on Optimize. And what we're going to do is defragment that drive. And then just click on the Optimize button. And it's going to start doing its defragmentation. And just let that finish. And then when it's all done, do your shrink volume again. And you should have no error messages with that now. So now it's time to actually create that disk image file. Now the way to find this is to go into right click on the Windows icon and go to Control Panel. And you want to go into System and Security. And you want to click on File History. And you'll find the System Image Backup link on this page here down in the corner. This is the only way I know to find this thing. Even if you do a search for a system image or image backup or image, it won't find this in Windows. And this was really easy to do in Windows 7. Just click on Control Panel, System and Security, click on Backup and Restore, and then on the near the top left corner there, there's a link that says Create a System Image. That's all you got to do. But in Windows 8, they've kind of buried this down here. There seems to be a lot of opinions on why they put this down here. Do they just kind of forget to make it obvious, or are they trying to obscure it? I have no idea. You tell me. But in any case, we want to click on System Image Backup. And it's going to look for backup devices that it can put that backup image file onto. And by default, of course, you can't save a system image to the same drive that you're doing a system image of. That just doesn't work. And there's a few options here. It automatically found my files drive, which is what I want to put this on. And that's the only option in there. I've actually got a thumb drive plugged in. It will not save it to a thumb drive, unfortunately. Another option is you can actually save the system image onto DVDs or Blu-ray. But this is something you probably want to avoid like the plague, because if you do this, it's going to take you a very long time. and It's going to use up a lot of DVDs or Blu-rays, and it's really not a very good way to go. Also, if you have an error reading one of those discs in the set, the whole thing isn't going to work. So I would avoid DVDs whenever possible. Another good option is on a network location. And if you have like a network attached storage or, uh, you know, just another machine that's acting as a file server, this is a good place to do it too. You can save it directly to your file storage on the network. Make sure when you do this, if it's required that you put in the username and password, that'll be part of the file. Otherwise, you could have troubles there. So 
that's a great idea to do if you have that option. In my case, I'm going to put it on this hard disk on my files drive. I'm just going to click Next. It's saying it could take up to 20 gig of space. That's pretty small. This won't take very long. And you can also see that it's going to do the entire C drive and that system reserve partition. It does this by default. You cannot break this down. You can't do a system image of part of the C drive or exclude these files or include those files. It's an all or nothing type of deal. So I'm just going to click on Start, start Backup. And it's creating our system image. Okay, that finished up. That only took about a minute and a half or two minutes or so. So I'm just going to close that. And let me show you what files it created. Let me go back in here, go onto our files drive. It automatically created this Windows image backup folder. And if I go in here, it's going to ask me to have permissions assigned. And the lab is the name of this computer. Again with that. And backup, it'll create this backup folder with the date. And when you do a restore, it'll automatically search for the most recent backup. And here we have the actual backup image files. One of these is 258 megs. That's that system partition. And this other one is going to be, it's a 12 gig image. And that is the actual C drive. And all these other files are just documents on how it did that. And they're saved by default as a .vhdx file or a hard disk image file. So that's what they look like. Let me close out of here. We got one more thing we need to make sure we do before we get out of this system and take that other C drive out and pitch it. We need to make sure we have a recovery disk or a thumb drive that's configured as a recovery disk. Because what we're going to do, when we power this off, we're going to take out the C drive, disconnect it physically, and I need a way to start up this computer so I can start the recovery from the files drive onto the new drive. And if your computer came with a DVD of the operating system, you can use that. Most of them now don't, so you'll need to create a recovery disk. To do that, just click on Recovery. And we want to create a recovery drive. So I'll click on that and OK that. And this is something, if you don't have one of these and you don't have an install disk for Windows, you need to create one of these. So make sure you do this now rather than find out you don't have it when your hard drive crashes. So I'm going to create a recovery drive. Click Next. And it's going to look for a place to create this drive. And by default, it found my thumb drive. And it doesn't need to be a very big thumb drive. It says it must be able to hold at least 250 meg. That's nothing. So I'm going to click Next. And keep in mind that everything on that drive is going to be deleted. So you want to make sure there's nothing on that drive before you do this. And just go into File Manager, open it, see if there's anything on there. So now we're creating the recovery drive on a thumb drive. That thumb drive is going to be bootable, obviously. Okay, it says it's ready. We'll click on Finish. And that's all you do. Now I'm going to close this stuff out, turn off this machine. I'm going to physically remove that C drive that's in there to take it right out of the system. Leave the USB recovery drive plugged in. Make sure your BIOS is set to start from a USB. Usually they are on newer systems. And then just restart the system, and it should boot up from that recovery thumb drive. If it doesn't, go into your BIOS settings and make sure it's set to boot from a USB drive. Okay, so I just powered this thing back up with the recovery thumb drive in a USB slot. And what we want to do here is just pick our keyboard layout, or US, or Albanian, or whatever you want. And then click on Troubleshoot. Click on Advanced Options. And then click on System Image Recovery. So by default, it's going to use the latest available system image, and it just looks for the files in there by the date. If you have more than one and you want to restore an older one, just click on Select Image and Next. And then if you have a list of them here, you can pick the one that you want. So in my case, I just want to use the, the only one that I created, the latest one. So I'll just click Next. And I'll click on Exclude Disks. Pull that up. And we see that it's already found the disk 300, the three terabyte disk, is already excluded because it contains the system image. That's what we want. So we know it's going to pull the system image from the correct disk. 
and we see the half terabyte Samsung drive that it's going to restore to. And that's what I want. So everything looks good. We're going to exclude my thumb drive because we don't need that to be overwritten. And OK that and click on Next and Finish. And now it gives us this warning that it's going to format and replace everything on the disk that you're putting it onto. That's what we want. So we click Yes. And it's preparing to restore the disk. Usually, if you're going to get an error, you're going to get it really fast within. I'd say probably 10 seconds or so. If you do get an error at this point, I'm going to put together a video on how to correct errors at this point. I was going to include it with this one, but it, I thought it might take too much out of the flow of this video. So I'm just going to create that as a separate video. It's not uncommon to get errors out of this. And I found a lot of the help online that I was searching for really didn't explain it very well and didn't always work. So I created a new video just on that. I'll link it in the show notes here. If you do have issues at this point, check out that video and it'll show you how to fix that. But in this case, everything is working real good. Okay, here we are, it's done. It took probably about a minute to do this, not very long because there's not that much on that disk that I'm doing the system image of. So I'm just gonna click on restart now. Okay, so here we have our Windows operating again normally after the restart. You can see it's got my Firefox on here. It's got my screen recorder that I'm using to record this. And if we go into Disk Management, we can see we've still got our Files drive. That hasn't changed anything. And here's our C drive. Here's our System Reserve drive. And here's this unallocated space that we had before when we shrank the volume, the C volume. What we're going to do now is we're going to reclaim that back. And the way to do that is very simple. Just go into the C drive, right click on it, and select Extend Volume. Click Next, and it'll automatically find the full size it can get. Just Next, and Finish. And now we've got our C drive has gone back to the entire size. And that's why I said it's really easy to do. You want to make the drive, even if you have identical size drives that you're doing the restore on, it's always good to shrink the initial drive a little bit before you do that, just to make sure there's not a little tiny bit or a bite here and there that's going to cause the whole system to crash. Because it's so easy to just expand that volume out again when you're done. So there we go, the C drive is back to its full size. Everything is good. We have room on there. And all of our files are in there. Windows is still licensed. It hasn't messed that up at all. Everything is happy. It's always a good idea to have a, a good working copy of a system image on your machine in case you need to restore that in emergency. It's also useful to do a test run and actually make sure you can restore it, which is what I made this video for. It is to show you exactly how you can restore this and get everything back and running in fairly short order on your machine as long as you have a pretty recent system image saved. So what I recommend when you're doing your regular files backups is periodically do a system image of the operating system and keep that as part of your file so that you always have it and you can always get back to it fairly quickly and if you get a virus or corruption or something like that you can go back to an older version if you need to and restore that and be up and running in pretty short order. We'll call this one a success. Well, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. So until next time, cheers.